Welcome to our special town board meeting for March 2nd. Would everybody like to uh, stand for the pledge? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We are here to workshop our um, compensation and benefits manual and to go over anything else we missed from our employment practices compliance manual, basically our employee handbooks. Um, where do you guys want to start with the compensation and benefits manual? Yeah. One thing, um, we did miss a couple of policies from the last employment practice. So are we going to um, I've asked the clerks to put together a booklet of all the policies that we have. If we want to write additional ones, I know we're missing one for, um, we said we wanted to do one for uh, earbuds, music, you know, sound. We said we wanted to do a policy for violence in the workplace, a smoking policy, um, on town property or not, you know, I suggest that we look at the policies and incorporate them if that's something you're interested in. Yes, no? Uh, I can't remember. Uh, um, you know, we can add. Uh, what I did last time is I marked one up uh, with the Employment pra Practices Compliance Manual. I have not sent it yet to Richardson because I want Shelley and Kim to go through it. Um, I don't remember whether I asked him to draft something about earbuds, smoking, uh, I think violence in the workplace. I asked him um, if it's not he in here to uh, add it. Um. I think I'm just suggesting we review all of our policies, see if we want to add any, and incorporate them into this. Yeah, give it. Yeah, give me so what you want to add. Draft what you want to. We might need, mm -hmm. you know, one more. We'll probably, you know, we'll have to look at that at the next meeting, or I'll get the list from the clerks, have them make copies for you, and we can, you know, do we want to have a policy? Hello, uh, for. Um, um, employee travel, education, any of that stuff. Yeah, I think we have already in here uh, uh, travel and education. We may have it uh, in here already. Okay. Part one, page one. Any comments, Joe? Well, I would move a policy interpretation up as, as part of the introduction. Um, okay, I mean, I don't. Yeah, it's not changing anything. I just think it's more logical up there. Um, I don't have a feeling one way or another, Bruce. I don't care. That's all I have. Page two. Again, I think we have to spell out uh, the uh, department heads, and I think we did that last time. Yeah. Um, I had one change for department head. It's uh, chair of the assessors. One, three, yeah. one. Yeah, I think we, we did that last time. Yes. And then he's missing the word hours after yeah. where he has 35. And uh, 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 yeah, that in uh, 133. Three, well, one, it says three, hours four. after yeah. 35 to 40. Yeah. Fine. Compensation. The note I have is. Um, 
over time, do we want um, over, there's nothing here about approving over time. All right, now, is there something? Uh, yeah, there is. Flex time 2.24. Oh, it, somewhere it says that you need supervisor's permission. Okay, well, uh, my note is uh, who? I guess we refer back to that. And 2.22, 222, room 222. An employee is not to work additional hours beyond the employee's scheduled work hours without the authorization from okay, the appropriate department. Okay, I guess my department. note is, I'm sorry, my note says who, but we've defined that already. On flex time, I'd, I think that should be a non-exempt employee rather than all employees. An employee, uh, 224? Yeah. So it's a not, only non-exempt employees can uh, take uh, the flex time? Makes sense. Yeah. Me. Well, th there's a, so the non-exempt employees are um, the town hall staff. Well, uh, Shelley is exempt, isn't she? Mm -hmm. she Who are the non-exempt staff do we need to Hourly have? employees. Right. So we want to... The, the, the problem with this is if, if you're treating a salaried employee the same way as an hourly employee, then the FSLR, whatever it is, thing, FLSA, will say they should be paid hourly then. So if you want to give people, salaried people, flex time, then they should be paid hourly. We have, um, what, four-time non-union employees in town hall? I'm sorry, we have four? four full-time non-union employees in town hall? I don't know how many. We have our bookkeeper, our aide to the assessors, our clerk. Town and our, clerk. And our deputy clerk. No, isn't the deputy clerk uh, salary? Full-time. I said we have four full-time non-union employees in town hall. Okay. The deputy clerk is hourly, and she's based on a 35-hour work week. The clerk is a salaried employee with no, I believe, stipulation. I think it's a 40-hour week. Mm -hmm. The aide to the assessors is hourly, and the bookkeeper is full-time at 34 hours, 35 hours. So there's no consistency here with um, with how they're done. Is that something you want to look at and make consistent? I've always felt that they all should be 40 hours based on the, the, the medical benefits. So then what do we do? Do we um, adjust their salary to compensate for the jump in time? Well, you wouldn't, you wouldn't need to for a salaried employee, but an hourly employee, you would. Right, because you're asking them to work five more hours a week. Well, ditto for a salaried employee. I think the bookkeeper's definition, and I have to get it in front of me, she was hired for a 35-hour week. So there's an inconsistency between that position and the clerk. Why should we change anything? You know, it's working. Because they're uh, all why? Just make people work f four or five more hours and increase our payroll. No, you don't have to. The, 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 you know, we've discussed this before. It's, it's the amount of compensation, of total compensation, is greater for 35-hour week, week people, people than 40. What, if you're breaking it by hours? If you're considering health insurance and vacation and... Benefits. And, and over the years, I think what you'll find is that the people who are on 35, there's been more sensitivity and they've gotten a little bit better raises than people with 40 hours um, because they're not making as much even though it's, you know, they're here, they're full-time employees. So, so I, I think you know, it's going to be very hard to, to prove that, but I, that's my feeling. 
Um, I think well, we should look for some guidance from Richardson on this because there is an inconsistency. It would be good to have a uniformity. Some people trigger into overtime. Others don't, especially in the clerk's office, you know. Well, if you made the people who work 35 hours work 40 hours, would they still get overtime or they become non-exempt and they don't get overtime? They wouldn't get overtime. No, they, they're still hourly employees. Would we want to change hourly to salaried? I don't think you can. See, that, I think that's yeah. one of our problems. One of our problems is that we have people who are not in the properly category classified in the Fair Labor Standards Act who are being treated as salary employees, in my opinion, and they should be hourly employees. Should we get guidance from on this with the job categories and the Yeah, yeah. I think you need to probably get that from the Dutchess County Department of Personnel. I can't hear you. I said I think you need to get that from the Dutchess County Department of Personnel because that's who tells you if it's exempt or not exempt. It's not based on the hours, it's based on the job classification. Right. And then the hours are based on the classification. So you're looking at it as the hours leading the class, but the class It's the class leading the hours. The hours. Right. Um, but it's, it's really the job responsibilities. Right, which is part and parcel of the classification. Right. And, you know, I mean, one of the problems we have is really isn't a non-union employee, it's a union employee, but too much hands-on and not enough management. Uh, so technically the person should be paid hourly. And um, the, I think a lot of these other positions we just, uh, we, there's, I can think of other ones. I don't want to go in the names with the, the camera, but um, we have a few other situations I can think of with that, too. Well, let's get advice from Richardson. Let's have him look into this for us. Uh, part two, page two. <coughs> Do we pay people electronically? Uh, yes. So I think we have to add a section on ATM uh, transfers. I have, you know, Shelly needs to have input on this. Yeah, well, she, uh, she's looking over the whole thing. Any other? Next page, vacation leave, paid leave. The, the only thing I thought here was down with scheduling is to arrange backup coverage for absences. And yeah, nobody really, I mean, it's people sort of just tell us when they're taking vacation instead of scheduling it, but that's a part of personnel oversight. You want them to schedule their own backup? Well, it, technically management could could deny vacation if if it's a, a critical function and there's nobody to cover it. So there should be something arranged. We, we don't shut down just because somebody's going on vacation. No. Them. For the union contract, we say that vacation leave should be requested at least two weeks in advance. Is mm -hmm. that how you do it, Kathy? Generally, no. For, I'll grant a shorter stay 
Like if somebody wants one day or two days, I would take a shorter request time on that sometimes. But uh, generally for a week off or something, yeah, it's two weeks. Anything else? I don't know. Do we want to put the two-week concept in or not? You know, we or have. Keep it we separate, have. Eh? It, it, it works yes. well. Everybody sort of covers each other here. I think we could look at a backup. Um, so let's leave it alone. I don't see why it has to be the same as highway. It's in. You know, they. It's very covered. Yeah, Kathy. Can I ask just a general question? Um, that made me think of it. This manual specifically says that it does not pertain to the collective bargaining right but previously the employee manual was anything not covered specifically in the in the contract reverts to the manual since you separated these into two but you're saying that this is for the benefits it doesn't apply there are certain things that are now won't be addressed because it's not in the so do you want either the contract so you're, the are you talking about policy exemptions or uh, yeah i'm talking about like this scheduling thing about the event most employees you know the, the senior employee would be granted if this document doesn't pertain and it's not in the other document there's no well no i, I understand that but we're going back to the page part one page one yeah, which and is it the policy is it the policy the exemption that you want Or the collective bargaining agreement, it, should it say that the compensation and benefits manual um, it's only applies to an employee to. covered by collective bargaining agreement if the issue isn't covered in the bargaining agree in the contract? I don't know. I mean, I think you would specific. From my understanding of a prior conversation with Joe, this was specifically separated. The other manual does apply. This one does not. Right. But now, what do you do with the information that falls between the cracks? I don't know if you want well, to Well, what it, is there information that falls between the cracks? Yes, the, the, the uh, uh, two well, no, let, uh, Could you let her talk? I just gave you that reference in 3.1.5 is an example of the first one that I see. Right, about the request for a vacation leave minimum. That's the sentence no. that's underlined? It's preference is the part. If two people ask for the same period of time, this document states that preference is given to the most senior person. Right. I don't believe that there's anything that covers that in the contract or in the other manual. In the union contract. Correct. So this piece of information is now fallen between the cracks for those employees. Well, you're saying this should apply to union people too? This should be as a backup. This should be as a back. If, if the issue isn't covered in the contract, then this kicks in. I don't know if you can do that. Uh, that you, or you, put it in you the have a, a, a something in the union contract that says two weeks in advance. Notice may be waived by the highway superintendent. Vacation approval shall not be unreasonably denied. So I don't think you can make this apply to union people. It was a subject of bargaining. It's not in there. I agree. Right, so there's no... I'm not saying it. I agree with you. It shouldn't be in that manual. There needs to be something probably in the other manual or something. How do you now, if there was... Have you had an issue with this? Nothing that wasn't easily resolved. So then why don't we just leave it? Well, it's, you're trying to do this to get it right for the future going forward but, and be a permanent document, right? So but were we talking about this document or the other document? Well, that's what I'm saying. Perhaps I don't know that it should be in this document because you specifically don't want this document to apply right. to union. However, I'm noticing that language, and I think it's language that should be somewhere else that applies. Let's stick with it. it let's helps resolve a dispute. Let's stick with this document, and we'll make a memo on the other document to look at that. That's fine. Yeah, but I'm just saying this is the document. But I see, have. Kathy, I can't deal with it. it, it it's so amorphous. I, if you have a specific thing. <coughs> we can talk about it, but in general, I, I don't know what That's we're... That's a specific thing. How is yeah. that not a specific thing? Two employees ask for the first week of August off. There's no independent arbiter, arbiter of what, how you, one would choose between which employee gets that week. Well... Because in this document, 
But you, How, do, but you do you deal with it with first come, first serve? Well, that's what I mean. And then you're, you have a provision in the... Objective. You have a provision in the union contract which says vacation leave should be requested two weeks in advance and shall be subject to the needs of the department. So you could deny under this. Uh, if I deny person X but approve person Y. Well, subject to the needs of the department. If you can, if you can make a case out of it subject to the needs of the department. But the union contract uh, seven, five point one point four. Let's move along. Let's not talk about this. Is a non-union. Now uh, we think this is this isn't changed. The vacation leave. That's or I can check with Shelley. This is our current schedule. I have. Um, I have a question mark there to check as well. Oh, okay. Termination of employee. <coughs> yeah, I, the two weeks in advance, I would change that to four weeks in advance. I think two weeks in advance is not enough time to give uh, notice of uh, that they're leaving. No, I would change the two weeks to four weeks. I'm fine with that, Bruce. I don't care. If they're going to retire, it's a lot longer than that. You got to get it. If they're going to retire, it's a lot longer than that because well, they oh. got to get the system primed. Well, it says resign or retire must give written notice at least two weeks. So right, right. Be four. But separately, the state retirement system, like it's like ninety days or something. Right. Like Should that. we make this consistent with that? No. Well, Why that? If they want their pension, I guess they gotta yeah. comply with that. I think right. Bruce is saying okay. in any event for Got those it. people will have. Next page. Holidays. Are we done with yeah? Well, this looks like it's the same yep. as the union. not addressing part-time uh, workers. Now we pay them for six holidays. Three point two point three for part-time okay. employees. Sorry. What? Yep. What, what do we need? It's here. It's right. I missed the section. What if the employees don't work on the day that these holidays occur? Well, they wouldn't be a full-time employee, no. right? No. What if a part-time, what if Memorial Day is on a Monday? Are we paying a part-time employee who is not scheduled to work on Mondays for a Monday holiday? Bruce, where did you say it dealt with part-time employees? Three, two, three, page, uh, part three, oh, page part three. Oh, part-time employees only at, oh, for six holidays. It, this, this has come up, what you're asking. Um, <coughs> for some reason, I thought they would get it anyway. Why? Because that's the way they were doing it. Are you well, okay? You want to continue that? Not really, but I think that's the way they've been doing it. 
Well, I think our, you know, hourly rates are lower than the towns around us, and I think the trade-off here is the six paid holidays for the part-timers. I'd, I'd rather adjust the rates then. Well, town of Clinton, I think, starts people are, it's like a $15 an hour rate. We're nowhere near that. I'm okay with, I think we should do a, a wage thing anyway. Okay. I don't know, I think we're better off doing the, um, well, it's not what's better the, off the holiday. for the, what? it's, it's, it's what's, I'm trying to think what's better for the employees. Um, yeah. we, we do have an obligation to the town. To save a couple hundred dollars a year on our part-time employees who aren't, who we're not paying we in open, par with the other towns We could towns always open the a window and throw out dollar bills, but. Joe, uh, that's not a funny character. I, I, I'm really not trying to be funny, Elizabeth. Well, I think I believe that we should pay people fairly, not I think start we growing I, people at I, I, 11, I, I, $12 I think, an hour. I think we do. I disagree. I think we'll have to take this up with the full board and see what what we we should do a salary survey that that's a, a you know wage survey we haven't done one in a long time but the issue here is whether a part-time employee who is not scheduled to work on memorial day should be paid we currently pay It's like we currently play, pay part-time employees who aren't scheduled for travel days to travel for education when they're not scheduled to work on their days if it's not mandatory education. So why don't we continue what we're doing and pay for these six holidays? Every, well, every, we said we wanted to every, look at every part -time it. We said we wanted employee. to look at it and speak to the full board about it. Yes. You are aware, correct, that in your table you have the day after Thanksgiving as a holiday. Yes. And then in 3.2.2. Oh, can, can you just wait a second? I'm, I'm not there yet. Salary survey. Um, mm. uh, upping hourly. Salaries, hourly rates versus um, paid holidays. Also, Okay, so a salary survey, to speak with a, a full, get the other board members input, a salary survey, upping hourly uh, rates versus paid holidays. Also uh, look at, do we want to continue paying part-time hourly workers for holidays on days where they're not regularly scheduled to work? Yeah, th I think the thing to remember with this is, it, it was so they, got paid they didn't lose money that's how this originally started right and then it became an right. entitlement where yes. they got it whether the whether they work or not right yes so so i think that's what we need to clarify other we than the, the salary survey what categories do we want to look at for salary survey i'd say all the positions and I can have our, our bookkeeper's clerk work on that. Um, in, in, yeah. Pick eight towns, ten towns. Uh, are you just going to do Duchess or are you going to go up to Columbia? Duchess. So, the problem is, is that the... Why don't we do surrounding towns? 
What's the problem? What? The problem is is that the cost of living is similar in, in southern Colombia to, to around here. Yeah, I would do uh, surrounding towns, maybe a radius of I don't know, 30, 40 miles, 30 miles. Red Hook, Clinton, Milan. Northeast. Hyde Park. I do Northeast, Menia. Just thinking those are the people on our grant. You want to do across the river? You want to do um, a soap is Kingston, any of that? No, I'd stay on this side of the river. What's the, if we're going to go to another county, why not go across the river? When the MTA tax was applied, it was applied to everybody within Dutchess. It was not applied within Columbia, right? So, I mean, if you have somebody that's using, if, it's, if a tax like that came up in the future again, conceivably it would have applied regardless of whether you live in Southern Duchess or Northern Duchess. Northern Duchess has a little pay scale, you know. So, I mean, I think that you have to look at the possible um, stresses on somebody's pay come from within the county, not necessarily are have in common with Columbia County. Even though I know what you're saying about the cost of livings are similar, but not when it comes to the taxation base. Your taxes, which are taken out of your payroll, are going to be based on the county in which you live. Since that's a direct impact on your pay, I think you need to stay within the county for uh, a salary survey. Good point. So, yeah, I don't, I don't so then we would so. do Ulster then, because Ulster paid MTA tax. But your tax, again, I think all your taxes are based on your county, right? Um, just a point of information. Uh, I, I would go outside the county. I would do Southern uh, Columbia to, you know, let's see what, what it is, and then we can throw out towns that we think. Throw are, out the towns who pay more than we do? Are uh, aberrational. <laughs> Uh, There's a lot of Mercedes in Southern Duchess. Oh, yeah. A lot of the town employees have Mercedes. I don't know. You know, Pauling has a similar tax base, a similar um, amount of parcels. Um, yeah, the, they have a different, pop, they have a population that's moved mostly from the city up there. They just want to. Bend the Rhinebeck? No, from 684, they right, want to... Right, put in Ryan back over to... Well... To, hello? No, no, you're missing... This is, this is a new migration here. They've, they migrated there years and years ago, 50, 60 years ago. Okay. We'll look at a salary schedule, and we'll come back to this. Sick leave. Is there anything else on this page? You got that, that you have day of Thanksgiving as a given holiday, and then that they can take day of Thanksgiving as a given holiday? I'm sorry, I can't hear you, Kathy. What? You have, it's, you have a conflict between 3.2.1 and 3.2.2. In the table, you say day after Thanksgiving is a holiday, and then under floating holiday, you're saying that somebody can use a floating holiday for the day after Thanksgiving. See what I mean? That, that's because of the 3.2.3 where it doesn't have the day after Thanksgiving for the part-time employees, I think. Let's check this with him. Yep. Okay, sick leave. I'm uh, we'll, we'll check it with Richardson. It's a potential conflict about the day after Thanksgiving. Just have him check it. And the day after Christmas. Yep. <laughs> I see the conflict in 3.2.2, uh, day after Thanksgiving. What about Christmas? Where's Christmas, the conflict? It, that's not the conflict. It's the day after Thanksgiving that's okay, the conflict. Okay, that's the conflict. But it's also the day after Christmas. But it, it doesn't say the day after Christmas in the, in the schedule. schedule. It says Christmas Eve day after Thanksgiving, Christmas Day, Thanksgiving Day. Okay. I read it wrong. Yeah, that's fine. Sick leave. Sir. I 
I didn't have anything there. I didn't either. Joe? Uh, yeah, I have to compare this really to uh, um, I haven't compared it to uh, the Union. It looks somewhat different. Personal leave. I don't have um, comments, do you? Hmm. Joe? What section are you on? Oh, Personal three, four. Leave. For full-time employees in 341, we talk about um, <coughs> uh, personal leave, and then down part-time employees, it, it's into sick leave. Should that sick leave for part-time employees be personnel leave? Personal leave? Why? Yeah. Why? Because the first paragraph talks about full-time employees will be credited three days of paid personal leave. And this is what the section is dealing with. Why are we jumped into sick leave? And do we talk about sick leave? Well, I guess we... Uh, we're on part three, page six. Is that where we are? Yes. I think that's well, fine. It's just saying they're not eligible, but they could take time off without pay. Mm -hmm. I, I don't find a problem with that. Well, then shouldn't it say in the sick leave section, the previous section, that part-time employees aren't sure. eligible for sick sure. leave? Is that what we currently... I don't, I don't know what's going on. To bereavement. We are into bereavement leave, unless there's anything else. So bereavement leave. It So, I mean, the, the note on the second paragraph 3.5.1 where the collective bargaining agreement had the sister-in-law, brother-in-law thing, we probably should just do the same thing here. I don't know. What do you mean, specify the uh, immediate family members? Yeah. Well, you mean add sister-in-law and brother-in-law? Yeah. Remember, we didn't think it was such a big deal, but but it was a huge issue for the 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 guys. Well, the, in the union contract, there's a whole schedule: spouse, child, parents, sibling, grandchild. Right, and this is the one exception. The one except the one disagreement between this and the collective bargaining agreement is the sister-in-law, brother-in-law. I'm fine with that. I'm sorry. Where where is it specified here who the family member? Second media? paragraph. For purposes of media film membership, I mean, as defined, spouse, domestic, child. But it only applies to three days from the day after the bur from the date of death to the day after the burial. Mm -hmm. Now, in the union contract, we don't specify who's a child. I guess that's not a problem specifying here. No. 
parent in the union contract we don't have legal guardian um, sibling we have grandparent grandparent spouses parents those are your in-laws okay child spouse uh, daughter-in-law yes son-in-law but probably the word spouse we ought to get rid of and say child's partner I don't know no, I... spouse yeah at this point because if my son's girlfriend passes away and you were an employee right you could get yeah I would leave it. I thought he was saying just the opposite. Your son's girlfriend, they're living together. Uh, uh, Doesn't say that. Well, child's partner. I, I'm suggesting we change it to child's partner rather than spouse. Spouse means what? They got a... Legally married. Legally. I thought spouse refers to a wife. No. No. A husband or a wife, a legally married. One partner within a legally married couple is a spouse. I would okay, so keep, you'd leave I would it? keep it as legally married. Well, keep it as a spouse. Yes. Okay. I have no other changes on this. Anybody else? Nope. Joe? No. Nope. Next page. I don't have any changes for disabled. Does anybody? Should we change town clerk to town clerk and bookkeeper? Where are you? Reporting of an injury. You want to add I think we deputy should, town clerk? No, or town clerk and bookkeeper. Bruce, you're right with that? No, I, th I think it should be supervisor. You do? You can delegate, but you're ultimately responsible. Yeah, but who's going to uh, file the piece of paper with somebody, I guess? Well, if I'm notified, I'll make sure it's filed. We'll have Shelley or the bookkeeper or the clerks file it. Or I call the insurance agent myself. You still have to file an SH-900 without the insurance company. That's just cool. So you want to put supervisor? Well, in my opinion, that's the management obligation, yes. Problem is, uh, you know, we're going to have a successive number of supervisors over the years. Do we want to make sure it goes to somebody whose regular duties are that, that it gets done? That's why I think you're better off with the town clerk or the bookkeeper. I, I understand your point. My, my take on this is the supervisors may not have been doing what they're supposed to be doing and, right. mm -hmm. and delegating, and therefore there is invisibility to, to things that they should have been. And I'm, I'm not saying you, I'm no, saying I, historically. I, I, so yeah, I, but a full time, you know. But, but yeah, but but think about it, Joe. If if the supervisor is responsible for something and chooses to delegate it, then that's the supervisor's call. They they at least know that they're responsible. If we do it this way, the supervisor doesn't know the super that he or she is responsible. Yeah, but why? You know, isn't it more of an administrative task no, to no, notify no, this is the insurance this is like company? A head of, this is like a personnel. I, I think this is not administrative. This this is action has to be taken. Right, and you can't take why, action why can't, if you're. In a, why can't the action be taken either by the bookkeeper or the 
Town they clerk? have no authority or accountability to do it. It's part of their job and it's no, one it's of their duties. Uh, Tell me how a bookkeeper is responsible for this. Pardon me? Tell me how a bookkeeper is responsible for this. But this if doesn't we, have any authority involved in it. This is just the filing of the form. There's no approvals that are necessary with this function. I just point that out for your conversation. I, I understand that. And so things that are filed, all I'm saying is if you do it through the supervisor, the supervisor can delegate it to the bookkeeper, the clerk, whoever they want to delegate it to. Are they going to remember and then it doesn't get done and the clerk says, hey, nobody told me. Okay, suppose the clerk doesn't remember. I'd rather have a clerk do it who is here full time. Okay, fine. And, fine. And, Whatever you want. And for many years, then Whatever. supervisors will come and go. Fine. Just do whatever you want. I'd leave it to the uh, leave it the way it is. That's fine. It's putting a lot of onus on the clerk, but no, it's unenforceable. Okay. I think if the supervisor is functioning as the head of personnel for town hall. It's better with the supervisor. Oh, yes. Change it to supervisor. So say the supervisor or designee shall complete and submit required forms. Yep. Also, with each of these employees, I would like a page for the department heads and or supervisor of the duties per these manuals, an easy one page. This is what you have to do. You want, uh, I don't know what you want. You want to draft it? Yeah, no, or? I want Richardson to draft it once he makes To do? I want him to. What section are we talking about? For each of these two manuals, I'd like an oh. overview page of of duties for the supervisor or department heads and department heads for a quick one page in the front, in the back. So you could say the supervisor has to do this, 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 and this. The department heads oversee these classifications. Rather than going through and teasing it all out, I'd like one concise page of duties mandated by these manuals. That's a good idea. Now we're willing to pay him more than the thousand dollars that we agreed. We need it. It's, yeah, it's that's fine. No, that's, it's I'm just, just it's pointing okay. out the more we ask him to do, uh, he's going to charge for it. But we encumbered more, so that's fine. Yeah, it, it's otherwise. Okay, where are we? We're on. Um Disabled employees. Um, I have nothing else there. Anybody? No. Sure. Wait, wait, wait a minute. I got to make a note. Okay. Where are we? Short term Short -term disability. Disability. You have the same issue in four point two point three. Okay. Yeah. Nothing else? Anybody? Now we uh, do this now, town make available short term disability plan.
I'll check with Shelly. Anything else? Domestic partner, um, is that the correct term? It is. I mean, for two people that are living together, sharing financial obligations. Why don't we want it to be spouse, in case somebody's not married, or? So to you, this, uh, uh, to, to the terms domestic partner came about in with marriage of these uses because there's discriminatory right. aspects and not everybody has the ability to get married. And now, and now we now, do. In New York State, everybody does have the ability to get married. That's why I, that's why I raise it. Do we want to so change? So that's a policy issue of whether you want to force people into marriage for benefits or if you want to recognize that living together is still a committed, you know, union that you want to afford benefits to. That's a policy decision for you to make and decide. I think we should talk to Richardson about this. What do you guys think? I think we got to decide. I think I might do a spouse um, now that marriage is legal, I guess. But then we are forcing people to get married. What if someone's in a long-term committed relationship with children? What if they're... Uh, and they don't believe a short term relationship uh, that lasts two months. What if you get married and your spouse dies on the honeymoon? You know, I mean, you're giving. Well, then it's work. covered if the, the spouse yeah, dies. Yeah, I'm saying, but in one issue, you're discriminating. If two people live together without marriage but have a child, two people get married, right, with or without a child, and, you know, you're treating one, you're treating them differently. You're making a judgment call about their relationship. Long-term domestic partner, maybe a concept like that. As a legal know. term, domestic partner, you can't qualify it. Hmm. I think we should look at it. I'm squeamish about forcing someone to get married for medical insurance, but we do have the ability to do it. You know, there is marriage equality. Let's let's ask Richardson. Is domestic partners or common law consideration there? I think so. Let's check. I don't know. This may impact. I don't know if this impacts anybody. Yes, it does. Okay, so then we. Yes, it does. Just figure. Out. Oh, okay. Who you think are getting medical coverage? I yes, know that that's a personal question for them. I know that there are people that are living together in relationships that are not married in various component, you know, areas of the town. Okay. In more than one department is what I'm trying to say. Um, Coverage will begin on the employee's first day of employment. Where, oh, date coverage begins? Yeah, why aren't we doing three months? That's another thing that's come up. What? That in some cases, we've had histories of the handbook says one thing and, and we've said it doesn't apply for 90 days. I mean, do you want somebody exposed during that period of time? I don't know. Well, why do well we under the, the union contract, contract it, it is three months. Yeah, the union contract is three months. Mm -hmm. 
All right, let's go with three months then. Say three months or 90 days? 90 days. Well, I use whatever wording whatever we have in the, the union contract, which is uh, three consecutive months of employment. That could lose somebody. Huh? You know, that could lose somebody more than 90 days. Um, yeah, that's We want something in here about um, about um, dependent children's dental and optical for the for the affordable health care. Care, you know that came up where we're not paying it for the um, collective bargaining unit. Should we address that? What are we talking, uh, dental you're talking about or more than dental? The affordable health care is mandated additional coverage for kids under 19, 19. dental. Yeah, that was on the next page, but it, he's there, left it blank. open. Oh, yeah, he didn't put it in. I, um, he, he has elected officials in 516. Highway superintendent. Oh, is that what it is? Yes. Well, maybe we then should say highway superintendent. Is it through me? I think the reason it says elected officials because at one time, and I think the, the town supervisor was also eligible to be under the town's insurance plan. So, and I don't know if you would go back to that. I don't even know if that ever came off the books. I mean, I think that technically you're still probably eligible to go on there, Elizabeth. I don't know. You know, it was a thing that um, the last previous supervisor declined taking the health insurance, but I believe that it's open for the town supervisor to take that. So if you switch that to like the uh, highway superintendent, just know that you're leaving that open about a future town supervisor, assuming you don't want to launch it. We should talk to the full board about it. It was it was Block who mm -hmm. did it. Before that, it had never been. That's correct. So. But it was never undone. It was just. I don't. So I, I don't know about that. I think we should undo it. Of course you do. What? Of course you do. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, what was that? I said if he wants to undo it. Mm. It's a part-time job, so it will only be part-time benefits. Yeah, but on the other hand, you know, other board members work pretty hard, too. Maybe they should be eligible. Well. That's Pauling right there. Again. And, and you know what? Pauling has people running for the town board. They have a vibrant, engaged okay. um, board. Maybe that's the difference between that? Northern and Dutchess County. Well, this is who's, what, Joe? Maybe that's the difference between Northern and Southern Dutchess County. Not necessarily. I think it's the difference between those that can do the job based on what the job. Yeah, they have people who are compensation all problems. different economic socio stepping up to run. It's, it's a good thing, you know, to offer. We should look at the, uh, the stress assessment of... I'm sorry, talk louder. Look at the stress assessment of, of uh, Pauling's finances, too, in this conversation. Well, I mean, I talked to the supervisor there, and I asked him about it, and they view it as a good motivator for getting, mm -hmm. for getting people to serve. Most of the Southern Duchess is like that. You want to look at that? I don't know what. The, I don't know where we are. We'll look. 
we said we wanted to look at Pauling's. No, not real. I don't. But I, I just, you know, I mentioned that, that they're the ones that do that because we talked about Pauling before. What are we doing about elected official? We're not doing anything yet. Well, let me drop a footnote. Uh, you could put in the word eligible elected official and that would probably clarify it. Should we move on to, we have to add something about dental. But that, that just leaves it all, you know, who is no, an I'm eligible. What? I'm just trying to help you clarify that it's not we, elected officials. I, I, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Bruce. I, I would go with highway superintendent. I would too. Uh, the affordable health care dental for under 19, we, we have to add that. Right. But he can do that because there was that issue, right, the grievance about it. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think he's leaving it open. There's like a blank there as to what we want. Well, uh, maybe you don't have to deal with it because it comes out that we don't pay for it. So maybe you don't deal with it. Maybe we just say that the employee pays for it. Uh, we could. What about optical? Uh, <coughs> non. Uh, the town hall employees get optical uh, now. Yes, uh, There is an optical. Okay, so we'll continue what we're doing on optical. What is it, a reimbursement or? Yes, I believe it's a reimbursement plan. It's a limited amount. I think it's like, you know, you go spend $1,000 and you get 100 Something like that. So we're up to medical? Want to do um, buyouts for employees? Saves the town money. Yeah. Why not? Okay. Anything? I don't have anything there. Well, again, we have uh, medical buyout. We have elected official up there in 531. Again, is that highway superintendent? I would make this open to elected officials. They're part-time employees. They could receive part-time benefits. What, medical? Sure. Again... We're all entitled to medical? Part-time. Part the rule is part-time part benefits after a certain hour. I didn't think elected officials, you know, the... the I would change it to highway superintendent. Yeah, I, I would too. The judges, uh, I don't... I, I would change it to in 531. Fans being the sturdy. Yeah. That's disgusting. And I'm not sure. That. I couldn't follow his uh, numerical examples, but that. 
they may be correct. I don't know. I don't think we had examples like that in uh, the union contract. I don't know. I'll have to check then. In 534, again, we have elected officials will change the highway. Nothing there. Anybody? No. Nope. Uh, what page are you on? Oh, Cobra. Cobra. It, 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 five, five, two. Qualified beneficiary notify. Now again. <clears throat> we should change the thirty to the ninety or whatever we're doing for notice for retirement or resigning. Uh, well, why would you change this? I'm just asking. Yeah, no, I, it is entirely different. But is, again, is it the supervisor or is it the bookkeeper? Well, I think the supervisor would designate the bookkeeper. So supervisor, I think we had or designee before. Kathy? In your summary, 555.1, you, you just for consistency throughout this document, you don't have domestic partners there. Right, we only had it in that one instance. Yeah, so I know. I'm just saying you have a consistency one way or the other. I know, we're going to look at it, but there's a... Okay. You think COBRA applies to domestic partners? Since is that what you're you saying? Have insurance, previously, if you have insurance applying to a domestic partner and now somebody's leaving goes on COBRA, it has to be the same way. Both those sections need to reconcile. Whichever way you do it, they have to be the same in both places. We have other instances, so I think we were saying that's that. That's the exact same thing. Yes. But isn't this just a summary of what COBRA applies? I, I, provide certain employees. Right. In we have an issue of whether we're allowing spouses or domestic partners. We right. have it with bereavement leave. We have it in several areas. And that's Medical fine. and COBRA, we should make it consistent. That's the only part. Well, specifically no, but the, the medical COBRA. <clears throat> the point I'm trying to raise is those other places are discretionary. This sentence seems to describe what COBRA applies to. I agree with you. What? I agree with you. Yeah. So it's not discretionary. The question is, does COBRA apply to... Uh... I, I believe that it would, because if you have if your domestic partners and you're getting insurance and the covered employee leaves, I believe the COBRA picks up whatever insurance they have. Therefore, that's why those two have to be... You can be 100% right. I don't know. It either does or it doesn't. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. We'll ask Richardson.
Can I make one more flag suggestion? Sure. Let's let's put Ryan back up there and take Dutchess County down over you there. You know, I thought about that yesterday when I was down at the county. Are you talking about the flag? It's a non sequitur, but I was thinking about the same thing. Page. Yeah. In six two one, it deals with people hired before January 1, 2015. Mm -hmm. What about people hired after? I don't know. I guess it means that we don't offer it. I thought there was a change you made, specifically. What? I thought that was a change you made specifically in one of your budget things to not offer. I think this had to do with this specific incident that we have now. I'm lost, Kathy. You think that we, in the budget, decided we weren't going to offer? I remember during discussions, going back over the last, at this point, three years probably, that you were talking about, you know, medical insurance for retirees. And I think you, I don't know what other discussions you've had, because you would have conceivably had them probably in the executive session since they were benefit related. But you had, I know you had discussions, so I'm assuming this came out of, you know, some action, some discussions that you as a board took. This came from Mr. Richardson. I don't, we didn't have any input. I don't know if this is existing or... Do we want to, let's just clarify this with him, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, that's where this come from. Now, there's been a Supreme Court case that came down on the question of can you change medical benefits for retirees? And the court seems to say that it's a, really a matter of a contract and what was the intent and uh, was it intended for lifetime. It, it seems to me it gives maybe some more flexibility on whether you can change uh, contribution levels for retirees. Well, I, I know that this is, it, it has nothing to do with the Supreme Court, but I know a lot of municipalities in New York State that are in are being restructured it's because they have too much of this. They, they have way too much funded uh, retiree liability or expense. And so the, the government is looking at things differently. I don't know if we have to take any action. But. We have so few retirees. We don't have enough full-time benefited positions, I think, too cause of financial stress. I, I, and I think what we talked about, Kathy, I think we talked about the, the you know, paying part of it. 
as I remember, not terminating it, but they should be chipping in over time. I think also we have... I, all I know is that there were talks about it. I don't know what the yeah. discussion was. Right, I think we're at the end of this for today. Oh, boy, because I got to yeah. go anyway. Anything else to discuss while we're here? decided to charge the highway department for water after our budget was passed. We got the notification. We paid the last quarter and last year because we had leftover money in the line. Right. We don't have adequate money in the line it's to pay the quarter. It's going to run about $1,000 over budget and as of now. There's 130 What would you guys there. like to do? Do you want to allocate money and pay it or should we let them know that because they didn't let us know of a new charge before our budget was passed. We're going to defer it until next year. Well, are those the only two choices? Or we can reallocate some of the stuff in, in the budget. Every we, other municipality that, that charges us gets it in before our budget year. But Bruce, what do you want to do? I'd rather move money around. Move money around? I think you're going to have to take it from contingency. It's so early in the year. You're going to have to move from. We're going to have to fund a line. Fund balance or something. Yeah. Well, didn't you have something else you mentioned that is not funded? Uh, the, um, the garage door damage that needs to come out of a repair line to be paid out of there, but there's not enough money let's, on that. Let's, let's stick with this question of village water. Yeah. No, but it's, it's the same question. As no, this is a different not. question. There's a source of income on one and there's not on the other. So there's, there's, there's a source of income on, on the garage door? Yeah, because we're we have an insurance claim. Payment. So the budget needs to be amended, which will be coming before you. And you're right, next, they, uh, this is a, it's a totally different issue. They're two, they're two very different things. Stick with them one at a time. Okay. Talk about both, one at a time. Um, I'd rather not uh, pay it until next year. We don't have enough fights with the village as is? It, it's whatever you want to do. Oh, so I talk, can I? Create a line and, and fund it with contingency? Yes, no? I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Okay. Um, don't think as fast as you. Anything else um, to discuss? What do you think, Bruce, about that? Bruce wants to pay it with, move some money around. I can meet with Shelly. Yeah, I'm not sure it's contingency, but. Well, I'll meet with Shelly and look at it. Yeah, I, I think you got to pay it. Okay. Um, I met with, um, I don't know, I don't think I, this happened before the last meeting, but Senator Serino um, made an appointment and met with me very proactively to discuss what we, what she can bring back to Albany for us during this budget session. And um, I told her that um, the governor should stop picking off local municipalities for being wasteful and that if they want to <clears throat> um, push consolidation, they should mandate it. You know, the state should come up with a plan for consolidation, either of governments or departments, um, that it's a very difficult thing to do for part-time local governments to consolidate fire departments, fire districts, villages, towns. Um, and I also said we need more money for infrastructure replacement, that that's what was suffering here, our roads, and they're having some money from the Wall Street settlements. But um, it was a good meeting. Um, I got all the contact numbers, asked her for guidance on um, the 
tax cap mandatory savings, um, but it was great. She was very proactive, very helpful. The uh, salt shed idea, uh, Kathy, we haven't, uh, I guess, formally responded uh, to that idea. I saw Amenia said they're not interested in a... Uh, no, I uh, talked, combined grant I talked to um, Bill Gallagher about it last week when he came by. I, There's a lot of logistical challenges. Yeah, I think it's putting a major salt, salt, salt shed far away from us. But I think, though, we ought to put a grant application in and... I don't know that I'm for a salt shed. I no, well, I'm not saying a salt shed. Uh, I'm not arguing that. I'm arguing we ought to put an application in for something. You talked about, uh, I forget which item of equipment. Uh, for for a, a, a grant application for what, Joe? For shared services with the county? Yeah. Um, uh, well, the, let's discuss that at a board, you know. Well, the, I'm saying we ought to think about it. That, time is moving the board uh, for the highway department or something else I know Kathy had a piece of equipment that we didn't buy last time how who I, would we share it with there are a couple of pieces of equipment that we could conceivably share with other towns one would be that boom thing for the you know the mower yeah that boom mower another would be a, a bucket truck or something that I know we wanted for a long time that would really help us, and that's something conceivably that could be shared with other towns. So, I mean, in terms of equipment, if that's the kind of grant you want to put in, we can certainly put our heads together and come up with appropriate equipment for sharing with towns. Certain pieces are not that appropriate. Like, as I said, Salt Shed has challenges. Um, a, a chipper is not really, everybody wants at the same time. It's not really, it doesn't work. But the other pieces, you know, we can certainly come up with that if that's what Yeah, why don't you give us a list and maybe suggestions as to which towns would be most appropriate in terms of location it's always got to be something for the item and let's think if there's anything else. But, you know, the deadline will be rapidly soon. approaching. Um, Kathy and I and Henry Campbell and Ed Maddock and Ron Evangelista all attended Sorry? And Pete, Dunn. and Pete Dunn all attended the county meeting yesterday for the emergency hazard mitigation plan, which were, um, was very helpful that the county put that together. And what we decided, uh, I have the package here. There was one package for the town. Um, I reached out to the village. I, I'm going to put together a meeting to work on this where we could get the paperwork filled out in a day or two and get it into them quickly. It'll be a very helpful thing to have this all mapped out and it what it does is enables us to be shovel ready for different FEMA grants coming up. I know we've been hearing a lot in the news lately about misuse of FEMA, but we sort of need to do this to go after grants that could be out there in the future. So it was a great initiative by the county, very helpful. I will send this out today and get a meeting going um, and invite the village to attend. We figure that between Ed, you know, our co code enforcement officer, our zoning enforcement officer, highway, myself, we're going to invite Bob Fitzpatrick, um, the village's code and zoning enforcement officer, a, a village trustee who may know about infrastructure, uh, our emergency services coordinator, that we can pretty much fill the paperwork out, you know, with an overview. Um, if you guys want to put eyes to it before it's finalized, that would be great. Or if you want to participate, that would be great. Well, send it around, but... I think we're going to work on it in a day or two, but I'll leave something in town if you want to put eyes to it and put suggestions, that would be helpful. But I think Bob can answer most building things. You know, pretty much even in the meeting, we were able to, between us, flag potential areas for natural. This is natural disaster, so flood, storm, low-lying, coastal, flood prone, prone landslide areas. Fire. Um, anything else? Motion to adjourn. I'll second that. Thank you. Hey, Bruce.